course, you, you defended the tight ends uh, when we had you over here, to, you know, before the season. And Saturday was DJ. I think was 15 for 21 in the in between the, the numbers and the hashes. Tight ends a big part of that. It's kind of part of the the tweaks that you guys made, or was that kind of a, a concentrated effort to kind of get that middle more in play? You know, it's it's not that we you know, made a concentrated effort. It's just what the defense gave us. Sure. So um, we don't go into um, a game week and recreate our playbook based off of, hey, we need to hit this spot of the field or that spot of the field. Our playbook covers, you know, east, west, north, south. We try to take advantage of every blade of grass within our playbook. Um, but sometimes you get into a game and it just don't work out that way. And, um, you know, we did a good job of taking what the defense gave us. It ended up being in in those areas of the field. And um, at the end of the day, you still got to make plays too. And, uh, you know, the tight ends made plays, the receivers made plays, and DJ did a great job of, of putting the ball, reading through his progression and putting the ball where it needed to be. And, and that's kind of where you see the kind of the hit chart uh, uh, that you saw from a passing game standpoint. Right. Yeah, you know, it's it's you know these are still you know young guys we're talking about, and um, and you can you know preach and preach and and tell them don't listen to the narrative or don't pay attention to this or pay attention to that, and and you know even for coaches, it, you know, it, it's hard to just put yourself in a bubble and and be protected from that. So, you know, you're not only trying to overcome some some confidence issues within the building of, hey, you know, we're going to be okay or, or, you know, we, you know, we were just watching some film just a minute ago and it's like everything bad that could have happened last year, it felt like it happened. You know, a wide open touchdown pass and the ball gets tipped at the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, we get them to jump off sides, we got a wide open, easy, free play for a touchdown and they blow it dead, you know. Um, it's just like, those type of things just kept happening. And then everybody on the outside telling you where well, you're no good or this or that. And so, yeah, we spent a lot of time just talking confidence and, and getting that confidence back. And not only getting that confidence back, but once you get it back, have a little swagger about yourself. And, um, and that was not only for DJ, that was for every room in, in the offensive, uh, on the offensive side. And, and we're slowly seeing that. And um, now we've got to preach consistency. All right? So the confidence is there, and now we have to go put out consistent results, be consistently confident. Um, so that's kind of the next step in this. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy that uh, they've listened to all the coaches and, and support staff in regards to we got the pieces of the puzzle. We just needed to put started putting the puzzle together. And uh, don't worry about the pieces of the puzzle. That's on the floor. We'll pick them up and, and start putting them together. And that's kind of where we are right now. I mean, you can practice all you want and you can talk all you want, but at the end of the day, you know, it's a results business. And, and they got to go do it on the big stage, especially at Clemson. And, uh, you know, we, we had some success against Georgia Tech. We had some success against, you know, Furman and, and La Tech. But you go into a top 25 matchup on the road, uh, they're the division champs. Um, you know, we didn't walk into that building um, with the crown. You know, they had it. And we had to go take it away from them um, on Saturday. And that's where you're going to start breeding this confidence in, um, in, in especially in the type of play that we had. Um, you know, we got up to a fast start and, and, and we didn't put our foot on their throat. And, and that was the challenge on the sideline is let's take this thing away from them right now. And we didn't do that. And that's something that we can build off of. Uh, but the flip side of it is, is, is you know, we had some peaks, and then we hit some valleys, and they never flinched. Offensively, they were on the sidelines ready for the next drive. And whether that drive went good, whether it went bad, it didn't matter. They were ready for the next drive. And at the end of the game, they knew they were going to go have to make a play to win the football game. And that's another aspect of the confidence that we're talking about. And you can only get that from playing in a game. 
and you can only get it at that level that we need it to be at to go win championships, playing in those type of games. And that's what's going to take place here on, on Saturday night here in the Valley against NC State. Stafford, as the wide receivers have put together a solid four-quarter effort in, in last year and this year. You know, I think it's a, you know, yes, uh, no. You know, I think there's a lot of factors that went into it. Um, you know, DJ, DJ threw some, some balls that maybe he throws a yard out of bounds, two or three of those throws. Two or three of those throws were dropping in on the helmet of the receiver and him and going making a play. And those are 50-50 balls, and we came up with them. Um, so I think it's a little bit of DJ. I think it's a little bit of the receivers. Um, I think it's a little bit of, of the tight ends taking some pressure off the receivers and some of the plays that they made and vice versa. And then um, on top of all that, our offensive line played great. Um, gave DJ clean pockets, and then, I mean, he's just, you know, you stand in and make some of the throws that he made with the, the people draped around him. I mean, at the end of the day, like I said, he, he, uh, he won over a lot of people outside the building, but we knew that's who he was going into that game, and that's why we've been rolling with him since we have. Kyle, what kind of a challenge is NC State's defense put to you? Yeah, I mean, you're talking a, you know, a, a team that's got nine, ten uh, starters back. Um, you got some guys that were hurt against us last year that were starters um, that are back. They're really good players, and they just fly around. I mean, they're super aggressive, probably the most aggressive defense out of all 11 guys that you'll face at one time. Um, and they just they close gaps really quick. They bully you. You know, that's, that's something that I've, I've seen. They're so aggressive. And... They want to attack, and, it, and it's like you can mess around and, and get bullied by them. Um, so we've got to match that intensity. We've got to match that effort, and, and we've got to be physical. And, and that's across the board at, at all um, positions because if not, they'll pin you up against a wall, and you won't get out. And that's the type of defense they got. Um, I don't know much about rankings. and I don't keep up with all that stuff. Um, but I do know just just walking in here and, and hearing some of the guys talking, they're you know they're top three, top four, and all your categories in the ACC and top ten in a couple categories uh, defensively. So we got to work cut out for us. Burning Soul and Allen had their biggest games of the season against Wake Forest. What have they improved on the most thus far? You know they're just coachable. Uh, I'd say the first thing is they're super coachable. Uh, the entire room has just been awesome and. Um, accepting my coaching style, my meeting style, uh, you know, who I am and, and, and how I was going to do things. And, and it's different. They've had – they've gone through a rough, rough, uh, you know, kind of rough three or four years where they've had, you know, three – I'm the third different coach they've had, um, you know, in, in three years. Uh, and, and all three of us, you know, Coach Pierman, Coach Elliott, and myself, we're all different in, in how we approach the game in regards to coaching them. Um, so – you know, a part of it is they've been patient with me. This is my first time coaching tight ends. I've coached receivers and quarterbacks, and and um, and now I'm coaching tight ends. So they've been patient with me in, in regards to, um, you know, learning the ins and outs of, of the position. But, you know, you you got a group in, in Sage and Luke and um, Brenny and, and Davis. They all bring something different to the table, um, and they're all team-oriented. So all those guys make a difference on special teams. Um, so, and then they turn around and, and whenever their number's called, whether it's five plays or whether it's 71 plays like Davis played, you know, Saturday, they're ready for their number to be called and they're ready to make a difference, whether it's in the run game, the passing game. I mean, you know, I, I love that they got the catches and they got the touchdowns and that's all good. But, you know, I turn on the film and I get fired up when I see them pancaking somebody inside the box, you know, and that's the play that I call out to them and go, man, look at this play right here. Well, wait a second, what about, you know, what about Twitter blew me up over here on this play? Yeah, well, well, Richardson tweet, I don't know, <laughs> it's blowing you up on this play. I don't know, I don't know all that social media stuff. I was trying to come up with something cool right there like Rich Chat. <laughs> Rich Chat is blowing you up on this play right here because I love that you put that dude in the dirt and I can't see him anymore. You know, those are the things I get fired up about or we're out in space and we're making blocks and Shipley's coming off our butt or Moff or Pace is coming off our butt and uh, turning a four-yard gain into a 10-yard gain. Um, but I like the other side of it too where they get rewarded with some of those, you know, some of those shinier, you know, playmaking um, plays. But, 
you know, they've just done an unbelievable job, all four of them, of, of being super coachable um, and, and just coming every day as professionals. They come into the meeting room, and it's uh, there's no junk. They come in there, and it's just like, all right, Coach, what do we got to do? What do we got to fix? You know, what's next? I don't have to deal with any off-the-field issues with them. I'm not chasing them in the classroom to go to school. It's strictly like, hey, how can we get better as football players? We're, we're, we're taking care of the other stuff. And, uh, and, and that just allows me to free me up and just, you know, coach more football with them. So it's, it's been fun to uh, be a part of their journey. A good example of that is maybe Luke, nine plays, but one of them is pushing Shipley across the goal line. Yeah, I mean, that's an that's a extra effort play, right? What, what we call an extra effort play. And, and people's not going to talk about I love that you brought that up. People's not going to talk about that. But that's one of the plays that I pointed out that I, you know, won on our extra effort tape. And, um, and you know, that's just a – he made a great block in the run game. He made a great block that, uh, you know, Shipley could have kept it inside and, and maybe got in um, because of that block. He bounced it, and it was like, well, my, my job's not over. Let me go help him make this happen out here. And all he does is come off a great block, and then he puts the extra effort into pushing him. And, and I don't know if that got him across or not, but I know it didn't hurt um, in the process of trying to get him there. And that's just who Luke is. Like, Luke made a heck of a block on the last kickoff return where they were squibbing all the returns. And Antonio ended up, we moved Antonio to that spot. He takes the kickoff and, and returns it to where it gets us into field goal range. Well, that was a great run by Tone. But if you go back and look at it, Luke made an unbelievable block to free him up on that sideline. Well, again, that's what I challenge him to, to be. Be a tight end difference maker, but be a special teams difference maker. And Luke's just the epitome of that. Coach, how does having guys like that affect the game plan of what you can do and what you'd like to do? Oh, what do you mean? Just as far as the different things you can do with yeah. the talent they have. Yeah, well, it's like, you know, Davis is a guy that, you know, you can put him in the box in the run game. You can put him out of the box in the pass game. Uh, you can put him in the box and, and um, you know, convince them that it is a run box, but now it's a pass box because he can, he can make that happen. So, uh, you know, there's no limitations to, to what he brings to the table, whether it's inside the box or outside the box. A lot of people get fooled with Brenny and they think he's just a pass catching tight end. They kind of look at his body and and because he's not as thick as Davis is, they kind of look at his route running and and he looks more like a receiver and running his routes and kind of elusive with that and and faster. But then again, you put on the tape and you put him in the box and he is super physical. And um, when he uses his technique and he's consistent in his technique, I mean, he's one of the best blocking tight ends. Um, in the ACC, and and he just needs more time, and he needs more reps at it. But you can take you can take both of those dudes, put them inside, outside, put them in the run game, put them in the pass game, and we're calling our plays. We're not having to go in there and go, oh my gosh, you know, Davis is is a you know in the slot. No, nah, who cares? Let's go, you know. And if you saw on Saturday, there was a couple times Davis was outside as a as a wide receiver, and Brenny was in the slot. Well, again. You can only do that if they have the mental capacity to handle that. And that's something that's, that's you know, not a lot of people um, have that in, in, in offense. Like, you have to limit the, the mental side of it because if they don't know what they're doing, it doesn't matter how great they are physically. Well, with those two dudes, you can say, hey, I want to put you here, I want to put you there, I want to, you know, put one of you here and one of you there. And they're like, all right, coach. And it's like, well, do you know what you're doing? And it's like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. And then you ask them and – they know what they're doing, so here we go. So there's there's no limitations with with those two, and and again, Sage can come off the bench tomorrow, do the exact same thing. Um, Luke, obviously, there's a little bit more limitations there. His hair kind of keeps him from free flowing as a as a true wide receiver, um, and he's committed to the to the flow. So uh, we play him more kind of in the box. Um, but uh, I'm happy with all four of of what they can do and and all the different things they bring to the table. You mentioned Yeah, you know, I think it was just a matter of, you know, again, confidence and and um, and just timing and relationship with receivers and tight ends. And you got to think about it; he's got another year 
with the, basically the same guys. They went into the off season and they had a spring together and a summer together. So the timing of some of this stuff is just better for him. He's more confident. Um, you know, the protection is, is a little bit better, which again, makes him a little bit more confident in him sitting in the pocket and being able to do some things. But, you know, I don't want to speak on, on Kurt Streeter's behalf because I'm not in that room with those guys, but just from what I see from every day with him is he just feels more comfortable in the pocket. Um, he's not as antsy to get out of the pocket, and he's just more comfortable in the pocket, which then allows you more time to go through your reads and go through your progressions and, and to find receivers. And then, you know, the other side of it is every week he gets better and better at, you know, quote, unquote, throwing catchable balls that gives guys chances. And, and sometimes, you know, and, and at this level, you're not going to have the cleanest, you know, pocket. You're not going to have the most open wide receiver or tight end. Um, you got to put the ball. You got to place the ball in certain spots and and trust that that guy's going to go make a play. And I think the trust factor between everybody on offense right now is really really high. And that's where you're seeing some of the results of these plays uh, going in our favor, where probably last year they didn't. Kyle, you guys are obviously killing it on third downs this year. Um, after not maybe being so good at last year. Just curious how you emphasize that in the offseason, because I'm guessing if you're a coach and you win by a couple of touchdowns and you go O for O on third down conversion, you're probably pretty happy. Yeah, you know, for us, you know, I, I we made an emphasis, you know, as when we got together as a kind of quote unquote new offensive staff, you know, we looked at everything and uh, talked about where we wanted to make some tweaks and and like I said in the spring, we didn't overhaul or bring in a new offense. There's not a new passing game. Uh, uh, there's not a new run game. It's just we cleaned up some things. We maybe eliminated some things that, that we haven't run in a while and um, and just added some tweaks to it to kind of clean it up. And and we had an emphasis on red zone and uh, third down and improving red zone scoring and improving our uh, third down mark. And right now, you know, again, I'm not – I don't know all the stats and all that, but I, I think we're pretty high in the country in red zone scores. Um, and and we've improved on our third down. Is there like a, you know, magic wand we've waved to do that? No. Um, but we have gone and, and kind of gone about different in how we prepare for those, you know, two parts of, of the game plan. We've kind of split them up. For instance, I've taken red zone, and that's kind of my baby, and I got uh, – you know, I got a pretty good one in Taj Boyd that helps me with that. He knows a little bit about scoring. Um, and then Andrew Shipman, who's, who was a student assistant with me at Northwestern and has been here for, you know, I can't escape the dude. He came here as a student assistant after I left Northwestern. He's a GA now. I mean, geez, his parents need to pay me child support, right? Uh, but, but those two just do an awesome job. And then John Gross being on our staff. And we've kind of taken the red zone as our baby and, and we spend time on Tuesdays, and it's just us focused on that. And then we kind of come and present, hey, this is what we see. What do you think? And then at that point, we all kind of start um, getting on the same page. And we do the same thing with third down. Um, Tyler Grisham's done an awesome job with third down, and that's kind of his baby. And he's got his crew, and they go study it and, and, and get a plan together and then come back. And then we all get together and say, all right, this is what I see. And then we kind of dial it all into something. So I, if there's been a change, that's probably been the biggest change is kind of separating those two things and going, all right, here's your, here's your baby, take care of it, and then bring it back to us and tell us what you think. So that's probably been the, the biggest change on it. How much of the running back room y'all have help open up the passing game? I mean, you got three guys in there that you can put in at any time. You don't miss much. Um, and, and from a standpoint of, you know, running the football, obviously running the football opens up the passing game. Uh, but all three of those guys – protect like the, I mean I've never seen a group of running backs protect in the passing game the way they do um, mo you know most of the time you're going to get a running back who's a really really good running back he's a great runner uh, he might not take the passing game as as serious as he wants to because he's so focused on the run game but these guys take pride in protecting DJ um, and they take pride in opening up stuff down the field because because the side that they understand is is if we can be more explosive down the field, these guys have got to go defend those parts of the field and they can't hover around the box. 
So, again, we're doing a good job right now as a staff, and then the players are doing a really good job of buying in on what we're presenting as a game plan, not only to have a great, you know, running, uh, you know, rushing attack, but also have a great passing game to where they complement each other, and you just can't load up the box, and you just can't drop eight. Um, so I think everybody's playing off of each other, but those three dudes are great. Yeah. Throws it sidearm for a two point conversion. Have you seen something like that before? Yeah, I mean, that's no. His confidence right yeah, now. I was going to say that's just confidence. That's just trust. It's those two words. I mean, he, you know, he's a tough guy anyway, so that doesn't surprise me that he sits in there and just, you know, is willing to take it on the chin, basically. Uh, but he, the, the best part of that to me, Quarterback, old old quarterbacks coach. The best part of that picture is his eyes are still downfield going through his progression. He's got stuff all around him, and if you look at that picture, his eyes are still focused on where am I going to deliver this ball because I've got to make a throw and make a play right here. Um, and that's the best part I, I like about the picture. I mean, you know, the leg up in the air. Uh, you know, I guess that that looks cool. To it looks good, looks cool. But I mean, he he flicked that thing off of one. And then Bo being there in the right spot, you know, it kind of turned into a, like a little mini scramble drill without the scramble. Um, and Bo being in the right spot, Bo being locked in and focused on, there was a lot of trash around Bo. And Bo being locked in and focused on making that catch. And, um, and, and it's wild. But I didn't re – when I was watching the play, I wasn't watching the receivers. I was, I was watching the, uh, the pocket. And I really thought the official was going to blow it dead you know, with him kind of, you know, uh, whatever they call it in the dirt or whatever. Um, I really thought he was going to blow it dead because they were all on him. He wasn't moving, and it was just kind of – he was just kind of stuck there. So, when they didn't blow it dead and then, you know, the result happened the way it was, yeah, it ended up being pretty cool. Got time for one or two for Coach from Zoom if anybody has any. I didn't even know this was going on over here. Sorry, I, this is this, – this is cool. Where's your picture at? I know you at? spoke to the um, physicalness of NC State's defense, but just schematically, what do they like to do if that's impressive? You know, they can um, – they're, they're not a team that gets a lot of sacks and a lot of tackles for loss based off the scheme that they play. Um, but their three def defense alignment are really good at – um, they're really big and physical, and they can really free up the game for the linebackers and the safeties to um, make a big difference in the run game and just run east to west. And, and that's where you see, I mean, you look at, at, like last year, you look at all the people on their defense that made all ACC, you're talking linebackers and safeties. And um, it's because the defensive line frees them up to just run free and make a lot of plays. So. That's a little bit different. It's very similar to um, their safeties are so aggressive, um, especially in the run game. It's very similar to Iowa State's uh, defense and what we faced last year in the Cheez It Bowl. So, you know, it is it is different. It's not your your you know normal style of defense that you're going to face week in and week out. Um, so you do have to make some adjustments, and you do have to uh, you know really account for that in practice um, with with what you're facing. Coach, we got time for one more. So, 